Aloha, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us in worship today. It's still early in the year, and we can continue capitalizing on the new year momentum. Hey, let me share something with you that I'm doing this year to keep track how my days go. Uh, go ahead and take a look at this uh, Excel sheet that I've put together, but it's a, a simple spreadsheet with the days and months of this year. I have color-coded uh, a table that helps me monitor how my days have gone. So at the end of the day, I color code the day depending on how it went. From awful, bad, below average, average to great. As you can see, the year has started off well for me. It could be something that I learned or a conversation that I had with someone or to even an encouraging event. Uh, there are things that I can't control throughout a day. Uh, but there are a lot of other things I can control uh, throughout this year, like my attitude, my emotions, my discipleship to God. This is a way to hold myself accountable, to do what I can to make every day good to great. And I look forward to the end of the year so I can see how 2022 went for me. Uh, hey, you might want to try something like this. See how it goes for you in 2022. All right, something that I personally enjoy uh, are essential oils. It just makes things smell better. I put a drop with my CPAP at night when I sleep and it's heaven on earth. So last year, I saw this thing on Amazon that caught my eye. Take a look at this uh, picture here. It's this incense waterfall thing. It, it's so cool. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these things, but you, you basically light some incense and, and the smoke travels down like a waterfall. And in this particular one, you see it flows down and there's like these little ceramic fishies right there at the bottom of the pool. And they're supposed to swim in it like the fog. So I thought, this is so cool. Uh, so I bought it. And I've got a little bit of an allowance every month. And I told Son, and she gave me the, why did you buy this perplexed look? So a few days later, I got it. Amazon Prime, I highly recommend that. Got it in the mail. And I excitingly opened it up. Okay, here it is right here. I opened it up and took it out of the box. So this, this is what it looks like. And... It was actually a little smaller than I imagined. And then, I, you know, what I did was I, I showed it uh, all, you know, to the kids. I lit up the incense. I was so excited to present it to them. And we waited for the smoke and the waterfall. And, you know, it worked. Um, not exactly how it looked in the picture, but it worked. It, it wasn't that impressive, uh, to tell you the truth. I, I got a little... Got a little pushback and persecution from the kids. Uh, I didn't even really like the smell of the incense either. You could say I was a little disappointed and it wasn't what I expected. You know, life can be the same way. Something that may be appealing or attractive, once you get it and open it up, isn't quite what you expected. You expected more, but in life, some things under deliver. You see, New Year's is a crucial time for you and me because we're naturally led to believe that we're going to be able to have a new start and make new choices. And those choices will shape the direction of our lives. Over the next several weeks, we're going to explore some of life's toughest questions from the book of Ecclesiastes. We all have these questions, whether we say them out loud or think about them in our minds. Uh, thankfully, we can have them answered through God's Word. But before we ask the first question, I want to give you a little bit of background of the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, many believe that the author of the book was King Solomon, the son of David, who came from the adulterous relationship with Bathsheba. Solomon became king, succeeding his father. And he started off his reign well. He asked God for wisdom and God gave it to him. And consequently, he excelled above all 
all men of his time. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29 through 34, that he spoke 3,000 proverbs and over a thousand songs. Solomon was incredibly creative and gifted by God. His fame spread throughout the world and he became the wealthiest man of his day, just like an Elon Musk or a Bill Gates or a Warren Buffett. However, Solomon made a foolish mistake as a result of his heart being allured and attracted by the world. He married foreign wives. The Bible says in 1 Kings 11.3, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's just ridiculous. These women were not of the same belief or convictions, and this led to his moral downfall. There's powerful lessons here about dating and marrying someone of the same faith, but we're not going to go there today. Solomon pursued life. He struggled with life, trying to find answers. He looked at life and death, success and failure, wanting to know what's the point of life. And that's the first question we all have. The tragedy of this book is that Solomon knew what was right and he preached it to others, but he himself would not choose to do what he knew was right. Here's a major theme I want all of us to remember. Life not centered on God is purposeless and meaningless. We can learn from Solomon's insight and mistakes and we can apply them to our own life. Why? Why is this important for you and for me? It's important because if we don't understand the meaning of life, it causes all kinds of negative effects in our life. Let's read together Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1 through 11. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What does man gain from all his labor at which he toils under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its fill of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was here already, long ago. It was here before our time. There's no remembrance of men of old, and even those who are yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow. These are pretty profound observations and statements that Solomon makes about life. And Solomon says there are several results that happen in your life when you don't know what the purpose of life is for. One thing that can happen if we don't understand the meaning of life, life seems useless. If you don't know the meaning, why not just sleep in? What's the use? If it's useless and there's nothing really to live for, the world is empty. Solomon alludes to the, the fact that life could also be very tiresome, weary. He makes the observation, we seem to be spinning our wheels, running in circles. We're in this rat race on this never-ending treadmill. Even the weather patterns and the seasons, just like one big circle. Life can also be unfulfilling. There's no satisfaction. No matter how much we see, we're never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we're never content. Solomon says history just repeats itself. There's nothing new under the sun. I've seen it all. I've heard it all. It's not new. 
Also, Solomon says, it's, life can be insignificant. No one remembers what's happened in the past and no one is going to remember in the days to come what's happened between now and then. Fame is fleeting. Your name may be in the lights today, but nobody is going to remember you tomorrow. Now, some people will remember you tomorrow, but you know what I mean. In the long run, no one is going to remember who you are. Life seems insignificant when you don't know the purpose of life. And Solomon concludes in chapter 1 that if you don't know the purpose of life, it's meaningless. And this can lead to a couple different options for our life. If this is what we conclude, if this is where we settle. Number one, you can try to make up some meaning about life. If people don't have God at the center of their life, they try to put something else in that vacuum. It can be a sport, a hobby, making money, a relationship, a career. All these things on its own aren't necessarily bad, but if this is why we're living, then, and the only thing we're living for, then it's unfulfilling. Some people say we come from nowhere. And after we die, we're going nowhere. Think about that. If there is no God, no eternity, no day of accounting, then we're not accountable for anything in our lives. Nothing really matters. Now, I don't believe this because the Bible tells us differently. We do matter. We matter to God. You know, another option we have, if really if life is meaningless and God's not the center of it, we just... We can just escape. If life has no meaning, then just escape from it. People use food to escape too. They turn to sex. They turn to drugs. Really anything that can be addictive. People will fill in that vacuum if they find no eternal meaning for their lives. And the ultimate escape is suicide. Taking one's life. And sadly, many in this world don't see any hope or any other options. Thankfully, these aren't the options we have to settle for. God tells us what the point of life is, and we can discover what the real meaning of life is all about. Ephesians 1, verse 4 through 6, tells us what Jesus has done. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us to be adopted as sons, through Jesus Christ, in accordance with His pleasure and will, to the praise of His glorious grace, which He has freely given us in the one He loves. What is the point of life? What was God's purpose in creating the world and creating you and me? It says here that you and I were made to be loved by God. We were created as an object of God's love. He was so excited to create us and to be in a relationship with Him. God made you and me to love you and me. We were made to be part of His family. We were made to be adopted into His ohana. Hallelujah. In Ephesians, it continues in verse 10, 7 through 10. In Him, we have redemption through His blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And He made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure which He purposed in Christ to be put in effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. Through the life and sacrifice of Jesus, we have forgiveness available to us now. The mystery is no longer hidden, but revealed through Him. History is moving toward an appointed destiny. And you and I are personally on this, this, this destiny, moving toward an appointed outcome. Life is not a cycle. We're not going to be reincarnated, just going round and round. No, life is linear. There was a beginning and there is a point in destiny for all of us. One day God is going to gather everybody, everybody who is part of His family, and we're going to live with Him forever. Life 
for you and for me is preparation for eternity. Another verse in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, it says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. In the Living Bible translation, it says everything is appropriate in its own time. But though God has planted eternity in the hearts of men, even so, many cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. We don't know in many ways what God is completely up to. And you and I were made to last forever. God's purposes last forever. And it is an understatement to say that God has long-range plans for you and for me. It's not the 50 or 60 or 70 or maybe 80 years that you and I will live here on earth, but they're plans that will last forever and ever. You and I will spend far more time on the other side of death than we will in the short span of life we live here on earth. That means you and I better prepare for eternity because we're going to spend most of our life on that side of it. I can't remember who taught me this or where I heard first uh, heard it from, but uh, really the word Bible. Uh, I heard it somewhere down the line where just an acronym and it's really stuck with me and perhaps you've heard it before and it helps you as well. But Bible stands for Basic instructions before leaving earth. So true. It's God's love letter to all of us. It's God's inheritance document. And if we were to live out the conditions of this document, God will absolutely give us what He offers. Heaven is a perfect place. And you have to be perfect to go there. Jesus Christ is the only perfect sinless one. And through Him we can go. We must put our trust in Christ. So how, how do you and I prepare for eternity? I want to close with four, four points to help you to start this year. Number one, be relentless. Make every effort. Luke 13, verse 24 through 25, Jesus gives us a parable. In the Living Bible, it says, The door to heaven is narrow. Work hard to get in. For the truth is that many will try to enter, but when the head of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. Then if you stand outside knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us, he will reply, I do not know you. Are you trying your hardest to get into the kingdom? Are you trying your hardest to get to heaven? What does that mean? It means that you're, you're investing your life into the most important area of your life. And that's a relationship with God. It means you're prioritizing who you're living for and what you're living for. It means taking responsibility for your walk with God, your relationship, and protecting it at all costs. It means if you're not a Christian yet, then you're relentless. You're making every effort to become one and walk faithfully with God the rest of your life. Be relentless if you're going to prepare for eternity. Number two, be repentant. Don't be mastered by sin. Romans 6, 12 in the New Century Version says, So don't let sin control your life here on earth so that you do what your sinful self wants to do. You know, I think it's good at times to look at other versions because sometimes we might pick up some different insights. If you've read the same version every, every year, you can sometimes become dull to it. But don't be mastered by sin. Satan wants you to sin your way out of ever going to heaven. Don't let sin master you. You need to stop deliberately sinning. If you're in a sexually immoral relationship, then you, then you better seriously think about changing before it's too late. Impurity, drunkenness, pornography, lying, cursing, greed, anger, selfishness. 
Don't let sin take you out of going to heaven. Number three, be rescued. Be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Acts 2.38, Peter said to them, change your hearts and lives and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Change your hearts, repent, and be immersed for the forgiveness of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God rescues us from the eternal judgment of sin. We all need to be rescued from our sins. And this is the spiritual point in time when this happens. And lastly, be ready. Life is short. We don't know the day or the hour. Matthew 24, verse 38 through 39, Jesus gives these words. In those days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving their children to be married until the day Noah entered the boat. They knew nothing about what was happening until the flood came and destroyed them. It will be the same when the Son of Man comes. And then later on in that same chapter, Jesus says, So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at a time you don't expect him. Why wait any longer? The fact is, we will live for eternity in one of two places, heaven or hell. And Jesus talked about hell and he knows more about it than you or I. It's real. If you were to die tonight and you haven't already developed a saving relationship with God, you'll stand before him and he's gonna say, in so many words, why didn't you? Why not? What were you waiting for? I, I love you. I created you. I made you for a purpose and you ignored it. I even came to earth and died on the cross for you, but you delayed and made your choice. Now you're going to live with it for eternity. God gives you and me warnings. Are you taking them seriously? Take action now, if 2022 is going to be different for you, take action now. For some of you who are new to all this, I want to encourage you, please reach out to us. Reach out to your Christian friend who brought you because we can help study the Bible with you. We have a, a framework of foundational scriptures that will help you understand what God offers you through Jesus what it means to follow Jesus, and how to be saved. God gives us His blueprint. And if you've never studied that before, we would be thrilled and overjoyed to be able to help you understand those passages. God doesn't want any one of us to live our life full of regrets, especially the regret of not choosing Him. So what's the point of life? It's this. It's to center your life on God because everything else falls short of eternal fulfillment. You know, as I mentioned in the beginning, just like this, this incense uh, waterfall that I purchased, some things in life look attractive and appealing, but once you get it, it's not what you expected. This is how sometimes life can be when it's not centered on God. Make sure that you're attracted to the right things this year. Make good choices. Make choices that will help you get to heaven. We'll see you next week. God bless. Thank you so much for joining us for service today. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.